welcome to another episode of On the Road with WHCA. My name is Kevin Tocci and today we have traveled to the Bostonian one-stop shop marketplace and dry cleaning. It happens to be located on Marble Street. Actually, it's a whole complex that has been converted from an old shoe factory and one small component so folks don't have to worry about running to a big supermarket. They can stop here and get the goods. We're going to go inside and say hello to Sandeep and speak with him about his Bostonian one-stop shop marketplace and dry cleaning. Stay tuned. Okay, so we are inside and we find ourselves with the owner of the Bostonian one-stop shop marketplace and dry cleaning, Sandeep Aurora. Sandeep, how are you, you, sir? Thank you for having me on the show. Talk to us uh, about, uh, about your, your little establishment here. Okay, so uh, this is a very unique project. Uh, we wanted to make a market for the town, which is actually not a convenience store, but we are not a grocery store either. So we are right in the middle. So we have a lot of variety, a lot of uh, bigger to small packaging being offered. Plus we have all fresh deli here. We have a restaurant with smoothie and protein shakes, which is all made fresh uh, mm -hmm. with real fruits. Salads and uh, all sandwiches are all cut sliced, uh, the meats are being cut daily and being prepared. Uh, we have a dry cleaner uh, uh, which has an alteration repair and uh, wedding uh, you know, gowns and all that uh, restoration and uh, we'll be soon by winter starting tuxedo rentals as well. I have to ask is, is what, what is your background? It sounds to me as though you're somebody who has a wealth of knowledge or else you wouldn't be able to bring all of these elements together. Yeah, see, I have a, I have a master's degree in hotel and restaurant management. I went to Switzerland for that for two years. And then I worked for very big organizations like uh, Burger King, Starbucks, uh, Jamba Juice. I've worked for a very big resort in California. I was a guest room dining manager for that location. And then my last position I was a country head for uh, training and development for a very big coffee company. They're the largest coffee chain in Australia now. And then I uh, just moved uh, here from Arizona where I had five Quiznos subs, which I literally started from scratch, you know, distressed businesses, took over, made them into profits. So I have about 14 years experience doing all these things. What was it about Massachusetts that was appealing? Because folks may or may not know that, but this is not the only store that you have. You have another one that is probably about, what, 10, 15 miles away from here in Hanover, right? Yeah, actually, it's only six miles away in Hanover. We just took over. Actually, we acquired that location very recently. It was a convenience store, and we just took over, modified it. We just renovated the whole thing. But definitely, the choices are very limited over there because it's a very small establishment. But it just gives us, you know, our customers even more opportunity giving to Pembroke. They can still drop their dry cleaning clothes and pick up facility over there as well. Why, what was it about, about Massachusetts? Not Massachusetts, but what was it about not only just doing a convenience store, uh, offering beer and wine, that you had to add another element in where you're, you explained to us just a few minutes ago that not only do you do dry cleaning, but you do alterations. And before you know it, you're going to be able to offer a tuxedo if somebody needed to use it for yeah. a formal uh, uh, dining or an event. Yeah, well, the idea was when I saw this place, you know, there are 400 people living in these apartments. And uh, the, that's why we named it as Bostonian. Uh, we used the shoe factory name and one-stop shop. So if anybody wants to come, whether they want to pay the bills, we have money gram, they can even pay their car leases and everything. We have a bank machine. So they just come in, they can do pretty much everything they want in this particular store. That was the whole idea of making uh, you know, a convenience store or whatever the market for these uh, residents. Okay, why don't we do this? Why don't we take a little bit of a tour around your store yeah. and uh, you can show us some of the stuff around here. Definitely, thank we'll you. We'll be right back. Okay, so our very first stop is here in the beer and wine section. Talk to me about bringing in different types of wines. How did you 
How did you decide what you wanted to bring in first? Did you have to call a distributor? How did it work? Yeah, there are, I think, four major distributors in Massachusetts, which pretty much supplies any kind of brand of wines uh, around here. And then, obviously, we had to choose which are the most popular, you know, most popular selling wines and obviously different variety of them. And um, the reason was, again, we, we are not a liquor store, so we had to keep a decent variety, but not something which is not popular. So we have different wines from different regions, European wine, wines from, you know, France, Italy, and definitely all local wines out here, like Barefoot is one of the popular sure. wines out here. Right. You get a nice mix of red and, red and uh, white wines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And definitely we have the cooler where we keep all the chilled wines, all selection people who are on the go, especially people who are living, as we said, apartments. They just want to come in the night on the weekend, grab a cold bottle of wines and just move on. How important is it that you listen to your customers? How often do you have you, since you've opened up, people come down and make a suggestion and you kind of follow up by looking for that same product? We, we did, did a lot actually uh, to begin with. When we started actually we just started with this one shelf and if you can see all that expansion how we added uh, it was just through request pretty much. People wanted you know different like Barefoot also was actually one of the suggestions. Mm -hmm. Yellowtail is one of the suggestions. So the, we Apothic there's a, one of the popular brands out here so these were all suggestions by our customers who are, they said, if you carry it, we will buy it on a very regular basis. And that's how we keep adding our inventory. And if you see these empty shelves, somebody just cleaned it up, one of the customers. Okay. So they just get so used to of the same particular brand, they just keep coming and buying it uh, all the time. So we take that, that very seriously, not in, even in the wine or beer section, but even our groceries or meats or anything like that that if they are requesting a lot, then definitely want to bring it in. So they don't have to go anywhere. We just don't want to lose that customer, so. How about the beer side of things? As a, do you just have the standard beers, or, or the, do you find we, yourself, because there are specialty beers and microbreweries yeah. that are in this area that people love. Yeah, we have a very small selection at this time. I think definitely uh, the timing was not correct, I would should say. We started in winter, so you know, winters is not a time where you will see a lot of people drinking beer. So we got some odd requests here and there for some, you know, craft beers and local. So we have about, I would say, two or three shelves right now. Mm -hmm. But definitely if the demand grows, I think I'm uh, thinking about, you know, growing it into, uh, we are getting actually next month some imported beers from Thailand, Japan and all that. So we want to definitely create something where people cannot find uh, anywhere else. We definitely have a lot of competition around, but uh, certain beers, they can only get it in Boston or Cambridge. So if we carry it, people don't have to go and travel for those uh, selections. So that was the whole idea of doing all that. Uh, talk to me about making sure at least you have enough whether somebody needs to clean the toilet, do dishes, laundry, to cleaning up a mess. To talk, what was yeah, the idea? Yeah, I think we pretty much covered all the basics what anybody needs for household goods. But on, as, as, I said, as I mentioned earlier, you know, we gave them a lot of variety. That's different. Like this is not a convenience store where they will have just one small package of things and that's about it you are done and then if you really need it you have to go to a grocery store we are basically uh, you know replacing that uh, system of you know don't go to grocery store we have whether you want the smallest packages you can think about it or the largest pack you need because there are people who are single out here and there are people who have sure. four kids so it's for everybody you know we, 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 we try to cater everybody you know give them a lot of different uh, variety, what, whatever new latest things are coming, even in the households, we are trying to bring them uh, for our customers so they can just, you know, come and grab it over here rather than go and look around at stop and shops. What, what has it been like to try to get the word out? I know that you want to service anybody who will come from any direction mm. to come here to uh, the Bostonian one-stop shop marketplace and dry cleaning. Rolls right off the tongue. Um, as far as getting word out to even people within this building, I mean, how big is this complex and how are you seeing more from the complex than you are from people who are going by and seeing you? I think uh, so far we are seeing more from the complex because as I said, you know, the word is not there yet. People don't know that we exist. What is this place all about? What do we offer? We have definitely, uh, you know, printed some brochures and, you know, flyers uh, right. this month. So we're going to be promoting through that and other medias. We are going in the event uh, this week at the Whitman Town Center. 
So we are trying whatever we can, uh, you know, just to promote. I think definitely the disadvantage we have, we don't have the glass windows so people can right. see through. So, uh, so I think it's, it's more of word of uh, mouth as plus our own efforts from marketing and newspapers and all that. Okay. Kind of talk to me about what your thought process is to be different from maybe a normal convenience store or, or other convenience stores when you stock the shelves and, and what, is, what are some of the things that you see that go off the shelf a lot quicker than others? I think again like you know like if you see like pasta, pasta sauces, when we started the store we started with three different kind of pasta it's sauces. Grown. We have okay. like, we, if you can see it's almost like 10 to 12 sure. because people have a, again a tendency. I think the reason these kind of meals are more popular in the night time, you know, pasta is very fast to cook. Yep. So people just grab that, you know, pasta, pasta sauce and some, you know, shredded mm -hmm. cheese out here and, you know, get it going. Instant soups, like these are all made soups. You know, you just put water. This is a new s stuff they have introduced, you know, no yep. cans and everything. We still have the old-fashioned cans, sure. but it's slowly, slowly depleting, you know. Mm. This is the new uh, of system of doing things, you know. So definitely these kind of product are selling more, you know, so people are looking when they are looking for instant uh, food and everything. You know, cookies. We have given a lot of choices to our consumers, you know, six, seven, eight kind of pastas. You, mm. you definitely won't find this in a typical convenience store. This will be like in, in a place like this or a, a grocery store. I found a fun, something very fascinating that you had told me during a conversation that we had before the shoot, and that is just how you find that people eating ice cream by the gobs these days, yeah. more so than at any time before. Yeah, I think I was very surprised when we started, uh, you know, we had a lot of ice creams here, and uh, it was winter timing, and we used to just carry one brand, and slowly I think we saw that, you know, there is a big demand of ice creams here. So we have introduced like three major companies like Ben and Jerry's, Briars, and we got like variety ice creams, you know, for a lot of our customers. So they they have been flying. And what seems to be the flavor that folks like the most? Is there a particular flavor, I think, or are there more? Than I just think one? more cookies. You know, anything related to cookies has a tendency to fly. Cookie dough. Cookie, cookies and I think cream. cookies and cream, cookie and bar. Chocolate. You know, okay. so anything which is related to cookie has a tendency of going a little faster than the others. Okay. Uh, I also understand that you also, besides what we see here on the shelves, you might not it might not necessarily just be American cuisine. I believe you will offer other types of cuisine. Too, yes, correct? yes, we had like a lot of different cuisines from you know Asia, like India, Thailand, and China. Like mm -hmm. we had so like frozen entrees, it's all ready to go. We started with a, a very small uh, segment of those items, but as you can see, it's pretty much it's empty. Mm. So people have been asking me different kind of uh, more stuff. Can you get this? Can you get that? Uh, so definitely, that's there is a demand for it. So we have uh, a plan, you know, to uh, you know, like maybe I would what I should say, like expand that line, oh, expand good. that food line. Okay, this is the area that folks when they first walk in the door will notice, and that is power bars, cereal, and then on the other side, folks, uh, deodorant, a toothpaste, medicines. Talk to me about setting up this area, first with the power bars. Well, uh, these days, these are the number one selling items in stores like this because it's like the meal replacement for a lot of folks mm. who are on the go. You know, they don't want, you know, they're on a diet, healthy, you know, coming from the gymnasiums. Mm. So they are just looking for, you know, like a, a, you know, protein bar or a, or maybe early in the morning or a cup of cereal. They'll grab like a pint of milk and then have like their early morning start. So, I think that's why it's one of the most popular items these days. And then definitely people who just come in the, some kind of an emergency, they're running out of, you know, either diapers or toothpaste or some medicine or toothbrush or something. So they don't want to look around. They just mm -hmm. grab it right away and then, and also. We kept it purposely. <laughs> it's little on a you know high theft items as well, so you have to be watching those products all the time. That's why you know we wanted to be right in front of us as well. That was also one of the reasons. But but yet I can see that where it's directly from the cash register, yes, folks yes. Can, uh, can definitely can definitely see it. Yeah. Now, just back a, a bit of ways. I see you have stuff, for folks. If they have kids or if they have some kind of a project that they're doing with the kids, glue yeah. pencils. 
Yeah. And if you, uh, for some reason, someone's celebrating a special event like a birthday yeah. or an All the greeting cards. Yeah, greeting cards. Yeah, yeah. So again, uh, it was right in the front, so people want to just come and grab it if they're in an emergency, whether it's a night, like as you said. If they want to have a school project, they're finishing homework, they're out of pencils, pens, they can just quickly grab it or envelopes for mailing letters or anything, it's right over there. And then same idea was for the greeting cards, so they, if they are running late or you know they are in a last moment forgetting, they just come downstairs and pick it up and then go up. So that, uh, yeah, it gives them the, the whole package, you know, so as I said, it's one-stop shop, so anything they can think about it, we generally want to carry it. Uh, welcome to the area that a lot of, I'm sure, weary folks who are coming in first thing in the morning. They need a little jolt of caffeine or they might want a hot tea, iced tea, or maybe even some European coffee can uh, feel at home here. Can you give me an idea of this layout? Yeah, basically we are keeping all these organic teas. They're very unique uh, in uh, taste and flavor and the way they are made, actually. Only you can find it in high-end European restaurants, okay. French or Italian. So uh, the iced tea is basically uh, make to order. So, you know, the way it's designed, it's linked with the uh, machine. And whenever you put a cup, uh, it brews right over there. So it's all fresh, freshness all the time. You know, you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, that it's getting old or something. Okay. Then uh, we have coffee from Lavazza. It's from Italy. It directly gets imported uh, from Italy. Uh, we carry in three different flavors, regular, bold, and decaffeinated. And we have different flavors, so a lot of folks these days are very, you know, they want vanilla, mm -hmm. caramel, and all that. Uh, they're most welcome to choose any flavor they want, as much as they want, there's no charge for it. And then we have the whole sugar and creamer station, whatever they feel like, you know, Splenda or anything, they are just, uh, it's all available in a touch of a button, no mess, nothing. Yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah. It looks, it's a, it's a very yeah. pristine, clean yeah, area. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's, instead of, it replaces the packets of sugar and the cream, yeah, where you get yeah. a kind of, Probably clean it, spruce it up every yeah, couple of hours. Yeah, and there's a, there, people are throwing trash everywhere. It's get all dirty, and then this actually will tell them how much they want. They can press the button accordingly. Wow. You know, so. So you kind of thought of everything. Yes, <laughs> used all my experience in the past. So. Very. So are you feeling lucky? Well, are you? Well, this is the newest thing to the Bostonian one-stop shop marketplace and dry cleaning, and that is Massachusetts Lottery. Talk to me about being able to kind of offer this to folks who might have a couple of dollars that they want to kind of wager on daily number, Powerball, or even scratch tickets. Yeah, I think it's, it's one of the big things in Massachusetts probably is the lottery, and it took us quite a lot of time to get it, but uh, we just uh, got it about two weeks ago. And uh, so I think it's not much to talk about lottery, but yes, it's in, in demand and a lot of people want to play these days. Mm. In your experience with, with in, in business, whether it was here or anywhere else, when it comes to lottery, is there a popular, is there favorite, are the numbers, the mass cash? I, I, I don't know as such that what are popular is depending, definitely, it is, I think it's more of a demographic uh, area, what people are in that mm. area are using, but I think definitely scratch tickets are way more popular than you know, playing the numbers game or, you know, Powerball or Mega Instant Millions. gratification. Yes, or people these days, everything is very fast and instant. They don't want to wait. And uh, the odds are very uh, less, you know, like in, in, in a Mega Million or Powerball. Imagine being played in 50 states and I don't know how many million people buy those tickets mm. and there's only one winner. But in a scratch ticket, there is a winner, you know, pretty much every fourth, fifth ticket, sure. whether it's a small number. but. I think there are, there are more probability of winning. That's why scratch tickets are way more popular than you know going with these uh, national games. Do you get to choose which ones? Because I know you have a variety. No, uh, yeah, I, you, I think they give like a more random thing and then depending upon, you, again, your customers, what are they asking for it, okay. you can request the lottery to send you those tickets. And definitely you have to go by their laws. The, anytime anything new come up, like which we got on Tuesday, four tickets, it just gets shipped to us. We have no choice. Mm. And then we put it on our, uh, you know, uh, wall and we put like a sticker saying new on it. So then people already, and people who are playing lottery, they, all, they are very well aware of that and then they want those new tickets. And then we have like a bulletin board for lottery and everything, so which keep the advertising, hey, coming soon, this sure. is a new lottery. So they, I think they are very ahead of the game, way better than us. Sure, and then you also have this as well, which you, you looks like you keep uh, 
update yeah, regularly yeah, make sure you have yeah, stuff yeah what as well. and what is the uh, you know i think uh, uh, my staff forgot to change the mega millions is like i think 216 million now so yeah you can buy for one dollar okay. <laughs> so uh, yeah so it keeps telling them what is the you know uh, number uh, like a dollar number so they get attracted and then the you know they change the frequency if somebody is looking mm. for one ticket they might even buy five once they see that it's like you know about 200 million okay well what we're going to do now is go to one final we touched upon it briefly when we first this doing this program and that is is we're going to go back and talk a little bit about the the dry cleaning services that are offered here stay tuned final area that we'll discuss here in the Bostonian one-stop shop marketplace and dry cleaning it's that final word in the title <laughs> of the name of this business yeah uh, talk to me I, I like how yeah the area is kind of set aside you got everything all lined up if folks bring stuff in or it's ready for them hmm. I really have to know why you why you added the dry cleaning element to the convenience store and the deli and all the stuff that you already offer out there. I think uh, it's surprising. I think the reason I added uh, to begin with was more of a design <laughs> for the space. Mm -hmm. The way this uh, space was structured and we were paying uh, when we came to know that it's part of our uh, establishment. Uh, eventually, I think the landlord wanted to you know rent this as a separate unit. Actually, it's a, it is a B2 unit and we have the B1. But because of some town regulations, they have to keep as one Together. because of the back. Uh, we have only one door. We have a separate entrance for this location as well. If you can see, we mm. have even a separate logo and uh, entrance for this. And it was suggested by a couple of folks that dry cleaning could be a good thing that, you know, with you can't do much with 500 square feet. So, you know, uh, anything. And since we have a door in the middle, so I decided it will be a, like a perfect thing for adding a dry cleaning. I've seen... Uh, couple in the past in a gas station, believe me or not, uh, there was a dry cleaning where in the convenience store. So it's like kind of again, it's services and people are looking, you know, they want to grab a milk, you know, drop their clothes or anything, you know, so this is like a perfect thing and uh, took into consideration all these people living upstairs. I said they won't, they don't even have to run around, even if they want to get their shirt laundered or anything, they just drop it and pick it up. Even if they want, we even offer them. If they want, we can even just drop it at sure. their apartment. Well, I think it's I think it's unique because, yeah. as you said, it's just, we lead busy lives. Our lives yeah. are so much different than yes. 15, 20, 25 years ago. Some people mm. work two different jobs. Mm -hmm. they, they may not have a chance to stop at a big supermarket. If they have an opportunity, if they're on their way home, they could stop in here, they could grab something, or Let's say if they got a big meeting tomorrow with you know a board meeting or hanging out with the bosses, mm -hmm. you want to make sure you get a nice shirt or you get your suit or something. Yeah, pants. yeah. In fact, we got a lot of uh, compliments from a couple of folks uh, talking about, uh, as you said, the convenience. People don't have time. Most of the dry cleaning, if you look the statistics behind dry cleaning business, they pretty much close on Sundays, and Saturdays they are there for half a day, and mm -hmm. then even in the weekdays, they, if they are open, they are open early morning, like seven o'clock, and they generally close by six or something. But since they, they have an advantage, we are open till 11 o'clock, seven days a week. So they can come even in the night time, pick up their clothes or drop off their clothes, no problem. And we have express bag facility, mm -hmm. so they are, don't even have to wait here and you know, uh, line, they can just take these uh, home. And they just drop it any time. They're all the names and all the email. Everything is in a computer database. Right. We even have an app if they want to register. You know, once we receive the sh uh, their clothes, they get a message on their iPhones or i, I like Android phones that and they what, have. What's the name of the app? Uh, I think it's Spot uh, Business, uh, Spot Dry Cleaning Business. So you know, if they download that, it has all the uh, features. Even they tell you the history. You know, when they when did they got their this uh, particular code dry clean mm. in the past and everything, it tells you the whole history as wow. well. That's fantastic. And then on top of it, not only does he do the dry cleaning, as you said earlier, if you're paying attention at the beginning of this program, they do do alterations. If you need a button, if you need something to be Yeah, repairs, out, hand, yeah, well. yeah, alteration repairs. And you know, a lot of people, like if they have wedding dresses to be restored in package and everything, we do that as well. 
all right here at the Bostonian One Stop Shop Marketplace and Dry Cleaning. We're going to wrap this all up in just two seconds. Don't go anywhere. Anything that we might have overlooked asking you, I know that you, you, you're a guy who you were very quick as far as putting this together and worked very diligent to, to have certain things here. Anything that you're plotting or planning for the future for the Bostonian one-stop shop marketplace and dry cleaning? I think the, the main thing I want to add is uh, in future, that's why we are working on it. Definitely when we'll have more volume and we can afford like a driver and all that is uh, putting a delivery service. A lot of seniors or senior residents' homes or even people who are busy, they don't have time to come and pick up their groceries. Like, I believe that this is like in the game, like whether it's stop and shop and everything, they're pretty much, everybody's in the business of, you know, delivering at home. Mm. So we definitely want to capture that uh, segment. And, you know, they have minimums, orders and everything. If we, we can do that and, you know, with clubbing, with dry cleaning, that they pick up their clothes and drop off their clothes. Or, you know, people who want sandwiches, couple of sandwiches or milk and, you know, other cereals to be delivered, you know, we will deliver it. And very, it's very easy to do actually in the apartments. We don't even need a driver. Somebody can just run up and you know, drop uh, their apartments. So that's definitely we want to look that as a future, you know, and uh, getting into more caterings because since we have the deli and everything offering all subs and everything, mm. we want to expand our catering business if somebody has meetings, parties. And uh, another thing I'm looking at it is like once we are into that catering and everything is cakes, uh, you know, baking cakes uh, or taking orders from uh, folks for birthdays and all that and we will have cake prepared for them. All right. Uh, social media or, or a website, do you have anything like that? If uh, yes, yeah, we are working no on more? that and uh, working on a website as well. So soon we will have our own website and people can see our daily special, weekly special, let's like say if we are running a special on the wine this week or they've, let's say even holiday, during holiday times, uh, eggnog or this, mm. offering for this much money or what is going on with a sandwich of the month or if there is any coupons we want to, right now we are you know, giving away coupons early, then they won't even need with the electronic thing. They can just go on their website, open the thing and show it on their phone and they get the instant discount right away. Wow. Well, thank you very much, Cindy. Thank for you. Thank you. Show for me around on. your place. And folks, we want to thank you for tuning in. If you have a suggestion for a future on the road with WHCA tip, you want to suggest a place for us to stop into, whether it's in Whitman or Hanson or beyond, WHCA television at gmail.com. Well, for my uh, colleague Paul Watson and for Sandeep, I'm Kevin Tachi, and that's another On the Road. Stay tuned. calculations one in five kids in america struggles with hunger how can so many children face hunger when there's more than enough food to feed them all you're right barry we can help solve hunger by teaming up with feeding america to get food to hungry kids in communities across the country help flint and the feeding america network of food banks get food to the people who need it in your community find your local feeding america food bank at feedingamerica.org hunger together we're feeding america